By the end of today's video, you're going to have a complete understanding of how to start leveraging Anthropic and specifically Claude's API in your software, automation, or business. We're going to be checking out its workbench feature that allows us to actually start leveraging prompts within its interface. Furthermore, we're going to discuss pricing to see if this would even fit the business you're creating, and we're going to compare it to other AI providers. Therefore, let's go ahead and jump into today's video. Right now in the industry, we have a ton of options when it comes to accessing artificial intelligence through API. To list off a few of the major players, we're talking about Gemini, OpenAI, and then to be honest with y'all, Anthropic. Each one of these has their different advantages and value points. I've done videos on all these different platforms. But this video, let's go on and learn what we can do on the console side of Anthropic. Anthropic. Right off the bat, to get comfortable with the API and see if we even like it, we get $5 for free. So I'm gonna go and disclaim. It looks like you need to provide a number, so keep that in mind. And here we go. We get access to $5. Let's see everything we do with this platform and get a full understanding of what Anthropic is. Now, like with any platform, in order to even get started on it, you're going to need to get access to its API key. To do so, it's very simple. Just hit get API key. As you see, I've created a couple examples for the past, but all you need to do is hit create key. You will go ahead and name your key, and then once you create it, you're going to copy it and paste it anywhere, utilizing this in Zapier Automations or alternatively utilizing it in your software. If you don't know what an API key is, think of it as their way of understanding who you are basically how to make you pay based off your usage. What's great though, is that with a lot of these dashboards, we have the ability to actually start prompting within the dashboard itself. This mitigates it so we don't have to set it up in Zapier or a VS Code project. So I'm gonna hit start prompting. Now we got a couple options here when it comes to prompting that we maybe have not seen in other platforms. So right off the bat, let's just rename this. We'll call it first prompt. Hit enter. Anytime you run a prompt, deal with a prompt, do a prompt, you can click this and it'll show you all your previous history. Furthermore, if I don't even like the name, or I didn't like the prompt I wanted. I can set new prompt here. We'll call it second prompt. And now I can choose between first prompt and second prompt. There we go. When talking to artificial intelligence through an API endpoint, there is two major things you need to identify, the system prompt and the user prompt. Think of the system prompt as the context of how the model is gonna interact with the data it's receiving. Now a good rule of thumb when creating prompts to software is that most of your prompt will be in the systems prompt telling it how to give the outputs, e.g. given the three paragraphs, give it in a max of four sentences, be concise, don't be concise, be lengthy, a bunch of other stuff. Now, when it comes to actually prompt engineering and creating these prompts, this video, we're gonna do a very simple one. If you want a really in-depth video that I show you in-depth how I personally do it, check out that video right there. This gives you a six-step process on how to create an effective system prompt to handle your user message. And as a quick word of thumb as well, with your system prompt, which will be basically mostly fixed text, plus some variables here and there, your user prompt will be most likely just data that you want to have reformatted, restructured, or use as context for your output. This makes more sense if you watch the other video when it comes to prompting. Let's do a simple prompt together. For the system prompt, we're gonna just say your output should be, your output should be short and concise. It seems like within Anthropic, you have the ability to actually have it generate a prompt, which is kind of interesting. So let's go and click that. So in this context, it seems like it wants to actually help you create the prompt that it will use. So for example, if I hit write me an email, it can be like a prompt that could be effective for the user message. So we'll say generate prompt. Loading. Now this feature does not exist in the other dashboards, which is interesting. Here we go. And wow, this is actually a lot more lengthy than I was expecting. Let's actually copy this. We can edit as well. So within Anthropic's dashboard, you'll notice these little brackets here. What those are in this context is the variables we can set here. In code, works the same way. Whatever the workflow is and when the data is being passed in, this is kind of how it interact with it. Knowing this though, and what I've seen from my experience when it comes to prompting is that this kind of prompt, you don't want to use your message. You actually want this in the system prompt. So I'm gonna put it here. And furthermore, what we're gonna do is gonna delete this. And what we're gonna provide in the user message is actually just the variables themselves. So instead, I'm gonna go in and grab this, come down here, paste, hit enter, enter, or shift, enter, enter, grab here and paste. Now with our original system prompt here, what we're gonna do is, it, is we're gonna say this. We're gonna say, here's the customer's original. We're gonna say, we will provide, provide the customer's original complaint email and product information. And go and copy this and delete all this. Now, with the system instructions, it knows how to structure its outputs. And all we're providing the user instructions is basically, or the user's message is gonna be the data of the customer email and the data of the product info that they're complaining about. Make my life easy though. I'm gonna real quickly just give myself the variables for this. So I'm going to go and generate that real quick. Come on over to ChatGPT. I just asked it for example data to use. So we're going to go and copy this. I'm going to paste it here and we'll go ahead and copy this as well. Paste it here. Now, it's actually pretty cool as other dashboards when it comes to AI providers doesn't give you this kind of functionality. 
So we're going to try this out. I hit run and pretty good. So what you'll notice as well is that with the tags, it's actually able to tag what the relevant section. So we have, you know, brainstorm, brainstorm, email draft, email draft. Now, from my experience, this is kind of a lengthy system prompt. So check out that other video I referenced earlier to really show you how to leverage when it comes to dictation and the amount of words you use within the prompt itself, because that's actually pretty important when it comes to cost and scale. Now, another important feature within the dashboard is the model settings. When using model settings, first major thing is the actual model itself. And we'll go ahead and dive into pricing after this so you can kind of get an idea of that. Second one's going to be the temperature. This is important when it comes to creativity. Lower temperature, more consistent outputs at scale. Higher temperature, more creative. If you're dealing with software or automations, you're going to lean towards a lower temperature as you want to make sure you, your outputs are as consistent as possible. When it comes to tokens, you're going to want to shoot for a number between 500 and 1,000. You can go to 2,000. This is just the amount of output and input when it comes to the amount of actual text it's dealing with. Talking about cost so much, let's compare it to one of their bigger competitors, which is OpenAI. So on the low end here, we have Haiku. And the input is 0.25 cents and the output is 1.25. Coming over to OpenAI's lower model, which is 3.5 turbo, we're looking at 0.5 for input and a 1.5 for output. So in reality, it looks like Haiku will be a little bit cheaper. But let's jump to the high end here. This is probably the part that's a little bit more interesting for a lot of users. The high end here for Claude is Opus. Now that is a $15 input and a $75 output. Coming over to ChatGPT 4.0, that is going to be a $5 input and a $15 output. So we're looking between a $15 input from Opus and a $5 input from ChatGPT. Keep in mind, these are the most comprehensive models from both of these providers. A $75 output compared to a $15 output. What's going on here? What should you do? <laughs> Put it this way. I would test both, but lean towards the cheaper one. $75 for an output is insane in the context of AI. You would have to do something. Opus would have to provide so much value compared to ChatGPT 4 where you had to choose it if, if the value points are basically similar or near similar app for Chad GPT-4 as that at scale is going to cost you quite literally an arm and a leg. Don't do that unless it really is what you need when it comes to the value it outputs. Me personally, and the workflows I've been using personally, Chad GPT-4 works just as well as Opus. Might get some hate in the comments for that. Might get some people disagreeing in the comments for that. If it works different depending on your use case, then proceed. I just think personally that if you're going to go with a higher model within Clad's API, you're going to hit Sonnet, which is more similar to ChatGPT 4.0 pricing. Now, your next question might be, Corbin, how do I know which model is best for my workload? When dealing with these models, you only choose a higher model if the actual underlying output requires it. A lot of times you can opt for lower models like Haiku or 3.5 to achieve the same type of value points. And there's not really a much of a difference. The major difference being that it's extremely cheaper to use a lower model if it can do the same value point. So typically you want to opt for lower models unless your workflow really, really needs a higher model. Now, what's also interesting within the dashboard is our ability to evaluate prompts. I haven't seen this in any other AI provider as well. If I evaluate here, we can actually give a rating of a model response. So let's say I really hated that response. <laughs> I can give it poor and then just simply hit add test case. Simply add the relevant variables again, add the customer email, product info, we can hit run. And with this, this is more of basically identifying whether it's the prompt or the variables that causes the issue, like how we're formatting the data when it comes in as a variable within the prompt itself. Now, most of the time when you're feeding data as a variable, you want to keep it as lean as possible. On top of that, most of the time, if you have issues, it has to do with the prompt more likely than the data itself. So from this output, let's just say we change the data and we're like, you know what, this is good. We can use it as reference and put very good. As you see from just those couple runs in today's video, it cost me around 26 cents. That covers the fundamentals of everything you need to know about the Anthropic API dashboard. If you want to learn about other dashboards, such as OpenAI or Google Gemini, I did videos on that as well. So you can check them out and I'll see you in the next video. I'm going to go ahead and leave Gemini's API dashboard right there. You can check it out. Maybe that is more of the AI provider fit for what you're looking for. That's a random video. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.